William Gargan stars as Barry Craig, confidential investigator. For that charge to cure that tired, listless feeling, apply to a switch artist named Max. Max, of course, being the state electrocutioner. The National Broadcasting Company presents William Gargan in another transcribed drama of mystery and adventure with Barry Craig, confidential investigator. Barry Craig speaking. Any formula for mixing dynamite is good enough, provided the end result is an explosion. What is the Craig formula for dynamite? Okay, two ingredients are required. Namely, amateur tennis and the international social set. The result? Strictly dynamite. I had both ingredients wished on me one balmy summer's afternoon at the tennis matches. I was in a grandstand box under the candy-striped awning. Ah, life as she has lived. A tall ice drink in my hand and my hostess at my elbow. Said doll, uh, an aging blonde, was Hilda Hobson, former screen star, very rich, very eccentric, and queen of the International Cafe Society. Great wonderful. Oh. The tennis match in progress was the tournament championship finals, Kurt Kenny versus Bobby Blaine. Both lads as big in tennis as Rocky Marciano in boxing. The player, Kurt Kenny, was, oddly enough, husband to Hilda Hobson. I said oddly enough because the boy was 25, about half the age of his bride and my client. What was I doing in a twosome with Hilda Hobson? Watching her jewels. A quarter of a million dollars worth of ice, as the lady herself explained it. Oh, I wear my jewels to the tennis finals every year. It's traditional. It's wicked. Hold still while I take inventory. By the by, who's winning out there? Bobby Blaine's leading in the fifth set. Kenny and Blaine won two sets apiece so far. This one's the uh, rubber match. Yes, Kurt's behind four love. Four love meaning four zero, fifth set. Looks like your hubby's chances for the championship is down the drain. Mm, it does look hopeless for Kurt. Oh, well. Oh, played. Wonderful. Oh, wonderful. Uh, what was played? You're not watching the match. I can't and also watch your jewel. Oh, and ace. Bobby Blaine just scored a beautiful service ace. You sound like you're rooting Blaine in instead of Kurt Kenny. Blaine is such a beautiful player. Well, so is your husband. Kurt? Kurt is past his peak. Oh? What goes now? They call time. Mr. Craig, will you please follow the game and stop asking me questions? I'm beginning to feel... Well, heckled. Time called meant a minute's pause. Time for the players to sponge their brows, swallow salt and energy tablets, guzzle soda pop kept in a handy ice bucket. I watched Kenny and Blaine return to the court. The only thing, there was no action. It was Bobby Blaine's service, but he wasn't serving. He was stalling, looking a bit wobbly in the knees. Why doesn't Blaine serve? I don't know. Ask me, he looks a little Sick? Sick? Good heavens, he just needs one more point for the game. He... Blaine's down. He's flat on his face in the dirt. Give me those binoculars. But Blaine's just lying there. Unconscious. I mean, if only unconscious. If only unconscious. The heart, my lady. Five grueling sets in a 90-degree heat. Or are tennis players immune to heart attacks? In the emergency room, a quick complex of first aid and restoratives did nothing for the horizontal tennis player. A full-fledged doctor hadn't arrived yet. The tournament public relations man was doing emergency medical honors. A fidgety chap named Benton, Harry Benton. Say, if I could get closer to the patient a minute... Why, sure, go ahead. Please stop crowding around, folks. Please, this isn't an exhibit. Well, mister? Cancel the doctor call and call the morgue wagon. Blaine is... Very dead. Blaine's heart, was it? That was my guess right off. But I don't think so any longer. You don't think so? 
The rigidity of the face and the neck muscles. Pretty horribly contorted. Blaine died in agony. What are you sniffing at? A powdery residue around his lips. Well, that's the salt tablet. Salt is odorless. You find a smell? Enough to bowl me over. But not quite like it bowled Brother Blaine over. Blaine was poisoned, a quick poison to which he reacted almost immediately. Ten dollars, says the medical examiner, will spell out the text of my diagnosis. Murder. The deputy medical examiner pronounced it death by poison. The murder made big evening headlines and juicy gossip among the tennis set. I had an evening drink with the public relations man, Harry Benton, at Benton's request. We met in a place called the J. Creighton Memorial Club. I want to engage your professional services, Mr. Craig. To do what? Clear up the mystery. Who murdered Bobby Blaine and why? Yes. Well, have some faith in the police. We want a private operative working in close liaison with us. We and us? Explain the plural. Well, sir, I represent the J. Creighton Memorial Tennis Association. You know the name J. Creighton? Hazily, yeah. Uh, a champ tennis player once upon a time. A tennis giant, Mr. Craig. Creighton died in the 20s. He left a $5 million trust fund to endow tennis, encourage and develop young players. Et cetera, et cetera. It's embarrassing. It's bad public relations. It's a black eye for the J. Creighton Foundation. Yes. Will you take the job? I took it 10 minutes ago. I'd love some of the J. Creighton Memorial loot for myself. What have I got against money? Now, orient me. Who in tennis society had murderous impulses toward the late Bobby Blaine? Tennis society is a world unto itself pretty peculiar. You've no idea, Mr. Craig. You're a guy who just loves talking around the mulberry bush, making with the long-winded preamble. Come on, Benton. Take me inside tennis. I kicked off my investigation with Kirk Kenny. Kenny had a case of nerves. Look, look, I, I'm, in, I'm in no mood for any interrogation. Nobody ever is. Some other time, huh? Murder can't wait. Oh, yeah, and that murder theory. Ask me, it's a malarkey. You cops, I was trying to make a dull job look sensational. Diagnosis, murder. The medical examiner verified it. Poison. Nobody pried Blaine's jaws open and fed him the poison. No, but somebody left a pill handy to Blaine's reach between games. A pill Blaine would confuse with the standard energy or salt tablets. Oh. Is that the autopsy report? I'm betting it will be. Well, now, why would anyone poison Blaine? Why would anybody poison Blaine on a tennis court? And at the exact time it happened. Is that an oblique dig at me? You're the only beneficiary to Blaine's death I know. Yet. How am I a beneficiary? The incident saved you from defeat. I think you wanted to win today with every fiber in you. And for more reasons than just the title. Well, now, what other reasons would I... To stay on top. Be tops with Hilda Hobson. Keep the relationship superheated. If Hilda Hobson had any inhibitions, they weren't showing. You deserted me there in the stadium. I'm sorry. A corpse generally has priority. I suppose you've come to ask me embarrassing questions. You uh, could just let me read your diary. <laughs> oh, not on your life. Ask your first question. At the game today, I, I guessed you to be sour on Kenny and sweet on Bobby Blaine. Was it so obvious? And how did Blaine feel? That is, before he lost all feeling. Very eager for my company. Very eager to win the title of Mr. Hilda Hobson from Kenny? I'd half promised Blaine I'd divorce Kurt Kenny, but what dull questions, Mr. Craig. Sorry. What power do you wield over these young athletes? I'm worth $5 million, Mr. Craig. My husbands enjoy liberal allowances. Oh, walking around money. Who and play tennis? Answer me this. What fatal appeal do these young men have for you? Uh, can I get a frank answer? <laughs> no, you can't. Well, then give me a funny answer. As a girl, I idealized the classic Greek gods. At 50, I still do. Now, who murdered Bobby Blaine? I suppose Kurt Kenny, poor deluded boy. As if the removal of Blaine could possibly help him with me. Would it? No. Some other Greek god on the horizon? One always happens along. Oh, sure. 
There are six major tournaments before the close of the year. Your young Greek gods, all born poor on the wrong side of the tracks. All crazy to get invited to the best places, using a tennis racket to club their way into society. Oh, it's a nice, vicious circle. <laughs> Leaving Hilda Hobson's, I didn't quit the grounds of the estate. Not yet. I headed for the garage. The Hobson chauffeur had an apartment over the garage. A chap named Pepe Zaretti. He'd figured in the purple gossip the public relations man, Harry Benton, had passed along to me. Like his boss lady, Pepe was but totally uninhibited. <laughs> was I once the husband of Hilde? <laughs> yes, yes. I had that unforgettable pleasure. <laughs> you were a South American tennis title holder once. <laughs> I was the best tennis player in the world once. Until Hilda married you and put you on an allowance. Yes, I have no regrets. It was a charming interlude, our marriage. <laughs> Guinea hen, champagne, skin diving in Bimini. <laughs> Whose idea was it for you to stay on as chauffeur after the divorce? <laughs> we arrived at the idea, how you say it? Yes, yes, yes simultaneously. <laughs> Hilda does not love Pepe anymore, but she does not hate me. So I stay to serve her this way as her good friend and chauffeur. How's your tennis? <laughs> I am fat <laughs> here in the middle <laughs> and here in my wrist, rheumatism. Very sad. So who poisoned Bobby Blaine? <laughs> you want me to answer that? I'd appreciate it. Eh, poor Court Kenny. <laughs> How terrible if Pepe's ready to send him to the electric chair, huh? You're saying Kurt Kenny did it? Yes, I say. I say what I see. Now, what did you see and where? Driving to the stadium this morning for the championship finals. I am driving Court Kenny. We are stopped to give Bobby Blaine a lift. Cozy. The opposition riding to the battle together. No, it's a courtesy, Blaine's car is broken down. He's stranded on the highway as we pass. Go on. Well, in the car, I hear with my ears Bobby Blaine saying that he forgot his energy pills, that they are left in the dashboard compartment of his car. <laughs> then I see what I say. Don't scramble it. Say it. Kenny gives Bobby Blaine a few energy pills of his. I see this in my review mirror. You're really putting the finger on Kenny. <laughs> <laughs> to think that I should be the one. <laughs> now, tell me, who succeeded you as Hilda's husband? I mean, direct succession. Court Kenny. Hilda saw him win a tournament in Milan. And that night, she locked me out of the house. Fini, we were through. <laughs> you think I'm revengeful against Court Kenny? Aren't you? Yes, I am. I would tell any lie to hurt him. Like now? No. No, no. This time I'm telling the truth. <laughs> the electric chair for Kurt Kenny. <laughs> what a delicious possibility. <laughs> I found Blaine's buggy in a Trilex garage where it had been towed for repairs. I had to force the lock of the dashboard compartment. There was at least some truth to Pepe Zaretti's testimony. I found a small cardboard box. The box contained square white tablets, energy pills, presumably. It now looked like the late Bobby Blaine could have borrowed a few pills from Kenny. A few pills with one of them doctored with a deadly poison. That is unless somebody hadn't planted the ones I'd just found to incriminate Kenny. Somebody like Pepe Zaretti. A nice trick, very easy to work. My client, the public relations man, Harry Benton, perspired freely over my temporary report. If you prove Kurt Kenny guilty of the murder, what a blow to tennis. What a blow to the J. Creighton Memorial Association, you mean? Yes. The association originally discovered and sponsored both Kenny and Blaine. Both were identified with the association as protégés. The fund maintained them, paid their college bills, developed them as players. 
Until Hilda Hobson took over the burden. Well, you can't blame the fund. Maybe not. But boys born to working-class families lose their sense of balance in a, in a susceptible atmosphere. Too many of the expensive set making a fuss over them. I mean, if the boy's a winner. And only for so long as he continues to be a winner. Ask me. Big tennis could use a little more soul. However... That's neither here nor there. Mr. Craig, the problem now is how to restrain the press. Restrain the press from what? From sensationalizing Kurt Kenny's arrest. I've got to get them to play it down in the interests of tennis. You're being a little previous, Benton. Kenny hasn't been arrested. Nor is it sure he will be. I'm not fully convinced of his guilt. Yes, but I am. Only as a result of my report? Your report and something I discovered last night. What? Kurt Kenny had money bet in his finals match with Blaine. Quite a sum of money. $5,000. Looked like a pickup jury had already found Kenny guilty. Hilda Hobson, Harry Benton, and Pepe Zaretti. No vote there for Kenny's innocence. One vote for Kenny's innocence came along, however, out of left field. In the J. Creighton Memorial Club, exclusive for members only. A girl. A girl who looked as if she'd crashed. Dressed in a plain business suit. No sequins in her hair. No expensive look. She caught me at the bar in the middle of a swallow. Mr. Craig, I must talk to you. Well, what about? Kurt Kenny. Your brother? No. Kurt's just a good friend. And you are? Polly Blair. Well, talk. The infamous stories about Kurt. They're all lies. Kurt's fine and gentle. He couldn't hurt a fly. Nice character reference, but uh, how well do you know him? As I know myself. That's a pretty broad statement. I know his true nature, his dreams, ambitions, his inner thoughts. You see, Kirk confides in me. I'm, well, someone who can talk to, frankly and openly. You sound like a sweetheart. Kirk's a married man. A husband's sometimes stray. Don't please add to the infamy circulating about Kurt. Isn't it difficult enough for him? It is. Help, Kurt. Believe in him as I believe in him. The stories you hear that, that Kurt could poison. Lies. Oh, my God. Lies. Time, I figured, for a follow up examination of Kurt Kenny. To get Kenny, I had to sit through a tennis match. I occupied my same seat in the grandstand box under the candy-striped awning. Same deal as before. A tall ice drink in my hand, compliments of Hilda Hobson. Hilda herself was loudly in evidence. My, but Kurt is sharp today. Yeah, going great. Service aces, passing shots, drop shots, right on his game. Like he didn't have a care in the world. <laughs> Kurt, without a care in the world. <laughs> you know better, huh? Oh, I live with a man. He's been drinking like a fish. Up all night with insomnia. Why, he hasn't had a bite of food for days. He's playing on sheer nerves. Oh, that's tough. Booze, insomnia, starvation. So when does he begin being homeless, Hilda? Homeless? You're giving him the boot, I remember you saying. Or was there a change of heart since? There hasn't been. I want especially to be fancy-free for the eliminations this summer in Rome. Besides, I've got more reasons than ever to send Kurt packing. Meaning Kenny's fatal match with Bobby Blaine of the other day? You want to bandy words. Suppose you spell it out. Kurt poisoned Bobby Blaine. You have proof? Oh, you're the detective. I'm just an intuitive wife. And your intuition convinces you, huh? Beyond a doubt. It's all over, Kurt. Guilt. Every minute with me. Even his manner and look. Guilt. I see. Well, the set's over. Kurt won it, 62. That evens the match. Third set coming up. This is where it began, Hilda. It began? That other day, the fatal day. Time out before the third set, remember? Kenny and Blaine, just where Kenny and Corbett are now. Under the referee stand, sponging off, gulping salt tablets and energy pills. And two minutes later, Blaine fell dead. Poor Bobby Blaine. Yeah, weep for the dead. Tell me something, Hilda. Tell you what? Womanly intuition. You remarked on it before. How about manly intuition? 
Is there any such thing? Oh, do you suffer from sunstroke? No, from shock. Shock? The shock of maybe soon seeing Kurt Kenny swallow on an energy pill, then move over to the baseline to open service and fall down dead. Willie Hilda? What does your intuition tell you? You are suffering from sunstroke. You evaded answering, and now I'm really shocked. Excuse my rush, lady. I've got to get out on the field and save a life. I was on the field in time to prevent Kenny from swallowing a white pill, salt or energy. I had to wrestle him out of his hand. Now, come on, give them up, Sonny. Have you gone insane? Maybe I have. A cop goes intuitive. He could be shaping up for a psychiatric ward. But intuitive? Well, what's your idea about these pills? I see you're getting kind of intuitive yourself. I want these pills sent to the police chemical lab for testing. If they're okay, call me impulsive. If they contain poison, call Hilda Hobson, Madam Bluebeard. Chemical lab's verdict on the pills was poison, deadly poison. I had another chat with Kurt Kenny later that evening. I found him shocked into honesty. Sure, I better myself. Every penny I could raise. I was so sure I could beat Bobby Blaine. You see, I I needed money. My own money. I, I had a plan for myself. A plan to cut loose from Madame Svengali. Uh, Hilda Hobson, that is. Yeah. Be on my own. Be a man for a change. Divorced from Hilda and married to Polly Blair. Yes. Hilda then knew you were walking out. Hilda knew. <laughs> Suppose her pride was hurt. Her homicidal instincts were aroused. The fatal tablet Blaine swallowed was meant for you. You had innocently passed it on to Blaine that morning you gave him an automobile lift. The morning Blaine had left his tablets in a stranded car. Huh. Poor Blaine. You were supposed to duplicate Blaine's death fall today. Swallow a doctored tablet Hilda had sneaked into your pillbox. How could Hilda ever expect to get away with it? Plain murder. You die and be pronounced a suicide from remorse. Remorse for murdering Blaine. Hilda had her out, she thought. Craig, I, I owe you a... You owe Polly Blair. If Polly hadn't tipped me to your romance with her, I'd never have gotten an insight into Hilda Hobson. You see, I thought Hilda was giving you the contemptuous toss. I never dreamed that Hilda was a woman scorned. I had a few parting words with Hilda Hobson in police headquarters, watching her get mugged and fingerprinted. Kurt was leaving me. Leaving me, Hilda Hobson, for a cheap little gammon. For a girl he could have equality with. I suddenly saw myself as old and unwanted. Unwanted. A very moving scene, Hilda. And normally, I'm a softie for tragic emotion. But right now, for the life of me, I can't get an idiotic jingle out of my head. Idiotic jingle? But... I'll say it, but don't hate me. Tennis, anyone? You have been listening to William Gargan in another exciting transcribed mystery drama from the adventures of Barry Craig, Confidential Investigator. Tonight's story, Two Dead Men, was written by John Robert. The National Broadcasting Company has just brought you an NBC Radio Network production with William Gargan starring as Barry Craig, Confidential Investigator, directed by Andrew C. Love. Our cast included Virginia Gregg, Herb Ellis, George Neese, and Tony Barrett.
Hear Bill Henry and the news on most NBC radio stations.